Good evening, everyone. Let me introduce myself. I am Helen Pogue. I was born right here in Oswego 157 years ago to Henry and Harriet Walker McKinney. My father was the Oswego police constable and mother stayed at home keeping house. They lived in town until the year I was born and then moved out to a farm on the Plainfield Road. The farm was called Locust Lane on account of all the locust trees that lined the lane leading to the house. Those trees are long gone now and the main road is where our lane used to be. Growing up, I went to school in the Little Red Schoolhouse and every Sunday I attended services at the Congregational Church. Our first church burned down in 1894, I believe, and that was a shame. I think aside from our house, it was the most interesting building in all of Oswego. The church choir occupied the loft, which was in the back part of the church, and when the congregation arose to sing, they would turn their backs to the minister and face the music. How in the world we youngsters ever saw anything with those hats we wore then is more than I can tell. They were large, broad hats tied in the center with a ribbon and we would have to peek out at one side. But I expect our mothers wanted us to be fashionable like they were a few years later when they wore the hoop skirts, which must have been made for the sole purpose of helping the manufacturers and merchants and to clutter attics later on. The winter of 1857 was particularly severe, the coldest in my whole life. We had a spell where the temperature never got above 30 degrees below zero for several days. In spring, when the ice on the river began to break up, it caused all sorts of trouble up and down the entire Fox Valley. Here in Oswego, the ice flows piled up against the bridge and when the river swelled from the flooding, it washed the bridge away. We had to cross by ferry for a long time after that. It was a few years before the bridge was rebuilt. I was just a nine-year-old girl when the Civil War broke out. Even though I was young, I remember what worrisome times those were. Almost every young man in Kendall County was away at war for a spell during those four long years. Some of them not so young, too. Those that didn't go, the older men and those who were unable, were formed into a militia for the purpose of putting down an insurrection in the event that Southern sympathizers would make trouble. When the call for enlistments came, mother's brothers enrolled right off. Some joined the cavalry and the others signed up for the infantry. Milton Pogue, my future husband, fought in the 4th Illinois Cavalry alongside my uncles. The women at home formed soldiers' aid societies and kept themselves busy knitting socks and gloves, soliciting donations and sending food and medical supplies to our soldiers. Each farmer was encouraged to plant an extra row of vegetables for donation. In 1867, the whole east side of Oswego's downtown burned. Late one Saturday night in February, fire was discovered in Holly's grocery store on the south side of Main Street. When the door of the store was first broken open, the smoke and heat in the room was so dense that it was impossible to enter. The supposed cause was that a very hot fire had been kept in the stove all day. The stove pipe ran very close to the wooden ceiling, so on closing the store, the stove had been filled up full with coal, making the pipe hot enough to ignite the pine boards, which is believed to have set the building on fire. All the buildings were lost from Washington Street north. The loss of the old National Hotel was a serious one. The hotel was necessary, and this was a good one. Unlike most of the other buildings and shops, though, the National Hotel was insured. My father died in the autumn of that year leaving mother alone to raise us four girls and manage the farm. He was only 46 years old. It was a very sad time for us. When I was 19 years old, I accepted Mr. Milton Pogue's offer of marriage. My mother told me that 19 was much too young to go and get myself married, but I promised her I would never do it again, which made her laugh and she relented. After Mr. Pogue and I were married, we took over the farm on Plainfield Road and mother moved back into town. We were blessed with two children, a daughter, Hattie, named after my mother, and a son, Roy. The children have been a comfort and source of pride to me all my life. Mr. Pogue worked the farm and raised livestock, which he bought and sold to the Chicago livestock markets. After 15 years of marriage, Mr. Pogue and I went our separate ways. He went out west to Utah and Nebraska to buy sheep and ended up in Kansas as a stockman, farming with his older brother, Cyrus. 
He served two terms on the county board and was twice elected to the state legislature. Our son Roy was with him for a while, but then he moved back to Illinois and moved in with Hattie and me in a house on South 4th Street in Aurora. Hattie taught kindergarten and Roy worked as a stenographer with the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad. Eventually, we three moved into a flat on Champlain Avenue in Chicago, closer to Roy's job. Hattie and Roy stayed with me through the end of my days. I died in the spring of 1923 at the age of 71. I bid you good night, Oswego Land. <laughs>